3D is on the rise, and more people are choosing Blender as their preferred 3D software. It's free, it has a great community, it's powerful, and it's awesome. And with many big tech companies joining its development fund, it's growing faster than ever. In this 10-minute guide, I'll teach you the Blender basics you need to know, so you don't get intimidated by other Blender videos out there. So let's get started. Take the cursor to this region, then use the left mouse button to orbit the view like this. Use the hand icon for panning the scene left, right, up or down. And use the magnifying glass icon for zooming in or out. Now a better and quicker way to work with Blender is to remember the shortcuts to perform these functions. Pressing the middle mouse button will orbit the view. Shift middle mouse button will pan the scene. And control middle mouse button will let you zoom in or zoom out. Simply scrolling the mouse wheel also works. Now before you dislike this video, just because you don't have a 3 button mouse, let me show you the fix. Head on up here to edit. Preferences. Click on the input tab. Then make sure the emulate 3 button mouse is checked on. And before exiting, bring the cursor down here and select save preferences. And now, you can simply use the all plus left mouse button instead of the middle mouse button. With the selection tool active, you can select with left mouse button. To select multiple objects, hold down shift key while selecting. Simply left click dragging over the objects also lets you select them. To deselect, shift left click on it again. Or control and left click drag over it. To select everything, press A. And to deselect all, press all plus A. Now to delete any object, select it first, then right click to bring its context menu and select delete. You can also delete by pressing X and selecting delete. To add objects, head over to add menu up above and select the object from the list. If we want to add the cube back, we can find it under the mesh sub menu. You can also use the shortcut Shift A to bring up the add menu. Whenever you add any object in the viewport, it always starts from the same place. This is because of the 3D cursor. So say, if we want the object to start from this region, then we will have to place the cursor there first. To do that, select the cursor tool from toolbar and left click where you want the cursor to be. Or use the shortcut Shift plus right mouse button to do exactly that. If you add any object now, it will start from where the cursor is placed. Now to reset the cursor back to world origin, right click. Then under snap, select cursor to world origin. Or use the shortcut shift and S to bring the snap pie menu and select cursor to world origin. To duplicate objects, right click and select duplicate objects. Move the mouse to change its position and left click after finalizing. Or use the shortcut Shift D to duplicate, then left click to finalize the position. To move objects, enable the Move tool from the toolbar. Then click, hold and drag the little white circle to move. And if you want to move it in a certain axis, click, hold and drag the colorful lines. Here blue stands for Z axis, red for X axis, and green for Y axis. The shortcut to move will be G to grab, then left click. And for movement in a certain axis, press G, then press X, Y, or Z, to move it in the respective axis. Similarly there is rotation tool. White circle for simple rotation, and colorful ones for axis rotations. And then there is the scale tool. White circle for uniform scaling, and colorful ones for scaling in certain axis. Edit mode is where the actual modeling happens. To enter it, head over to top left where you see object mode, and change that to edit mode. By pressing tab, you will be able to quickly toggle between object and edit mode. Here in edit mode, you will be able to play with the vertices, edges, or faces. With vertex selection active, you can select vertices. With edge selection active, you can select edges. And with face selection, you can select faces. You can also use the shortcuts 1, 2, and 3, for vertex, edge, and face selection respectively. You can also use the tools, which we used in object mode, in here as well. Now, let's take a look at some additional tools you get in this mode. First is the extrude tool. With this active, you can extrude different regions of your model. Click, hold and drag the yellow button to extrude the regions. Use the hotkey to extrude regions quickly, and left click to confirm, or right click to cancel. Be careful, when you cancel the extrude with right-click. 
because pressing the right click only cancels the movement, but there still remains an overlapping geometry. So if that happens, simply use Ctrl Z to undo. To inset a face, drag the yellow button inside. Or use the shortcut I. This is really similar to the result you get, if you extrude a face, cancel it with right click, and then scale it down with as. First let's select an edge. Then with bevel tool active, drag the yellow button to bevel. Then down in the operator panel, you can adjust the width, number of segments, or shape. You can also bevel the vertices, instead of edges. The shortcut to use the bevel tool is Ctrl plus B. And scroll the mouse wheel to adjust the number of segments. If you don't have a mouse wheel, then after you press Ctrl plus B, press S to change the number of segments. And press A to adjust the width. And to bevel vertices, enter vertex selection. Then after selecting vertex, press Ctrl plus B, then V to bevel it. Or simply press Ctrl shift and B to bevel. With loop cut active, if you take the cursor near a horizontal edge, a vertical preview loop appears. And if you take the cursor near a vertical edge, a horizontal preview loop appears. So left clicking will make the cut, and you can make even more cuts. And in the operator panel, you can change the number of cuts. And with the factor slider, you can slide the loop as well. The shortcut to use this tool is Ctrl plus R. Then by scrolling the mouse wheel, you can change the number of cuts. And people without mouse wheel, use the page up or down keys in your keyboard. After left clicking once, you will be able to slide the loop as well. You can also slide the loop by pressing G twice. Currently you are in solid view, so you can only select the parts which you can see directly. To select the parts at the back, you have to orbit the view first. If you don't want to do that, there is a wireframe view for that. In this view, you can easily select all the parts of the object. The shortcut for this is Shift plus C. You can also turn on X-ray view for similar functionality. But the good thing about the X-ray view is you can go to the drop down here, turn on X-ray, and control the opacity as well. The shortcut to use it is all plus C on your keyboard. To add materials to your model, head over to Material Properties in right side and click on you. Then under Base Color, select one from the color wheel. You can't see any materials on the model because you are currently in solid view. You will have to switch to Material Preview or Render View to be able to see them. Let's switch to Material Preview first. There is a quicker way to switch between different views. You can press E and then select the view you like to enter. There are many different material properties you can play with in Blender. I will just show you two very basic ones. The metallic slider decides whether an object is metallic or not, one being the most metallic. And roughness slider decides how much reflective the model is. To add material to only certain faces, enter edit mode. Select the face where you want to add materials. Then in material properties, click on the plus button to add a new material slot and hit the Assign button. Then you can simply add a new material to it. Now the lighting in Material Preview is actually done by some built-in HDRIs, which you can access by clicking on the drop-down here. The settings can be changed from here. But, this lighting won't show up in your final render. As the name suggests, it's for preview only. So enter Render View. Now before we talk about scene lights, let's add a ground plane, so we can see the lighting better. Scale the plane up with as. Now by default, there is a point lamp in the scene. To get a brighter scene, bring the lamp near the model. Or head over to light properties, and increase the power. If you press shift today, you can see three more different kinds of light, which you can add in the scene. You can also change the current light to one of those, from here as well. The point lamp casts light in all directions. Spotlight, for focusing on a particular area of the scene. Area light covers more area, but only in a single direction. These three lights are dependent on the object's distance from the lamp. For the sunlight, you need to first lower the strength. Here the object distance doesn't matter. The light is distributed equally throughout the scene. You only need to change the direction of the sunlight. To add a camera, press Shift and A, and select Camera but we have one already. 
Then to enter camera view, select the camera icon here. To exit, select it again. Or use the shortcut tilt key and select view camera. When you try to orbit, you exit out of camera view. If you want to avoid that, drag this little arrow. Or use the hotkey N to bring it out. Then make sure lock camera to view is checked on. Now you won't face any problem while orbiting, panning, or zooming. If you want to change the resolution of the final render, then head on up here to output properties. Then change the resolution. And finally, if you click on render properties, you will be able to change the render settings. There are two main render engines, which come default with Blender. EV is a real-time render, while Cycles is a more accurate one. You can however, make EV look similar to Cycles, by tweaking some of its settings. Now to render this image, head over to render menu above, and select render image. Or use the hotkey F12. Once done, under image, select save as. In the file browser, select the file folder where you want it to get saved. Select the file format. Name the image. And then select save as image. And to save this project so you can access it later, go to file, select save as. Or use the hotkey control shift and as. In the file browser, select the file folder where you want it to get saved. Name the project and then select save as. And to open a brand new file, head over to file, new and general. Or use the hotkey control plus n. Congratulations. You made it to the end of this video. I am 3D Greenhorn. I've been making Blender related videos on this channel for almost two years. I will also be releasing a beginner video next week where you will create something better than a cube. So subscribe and turn on the notifications to get notified. And I hope to see you in the next video. If you like the Blender software, you may also want to learn it from the professionals by enrolling in a proper course. These are the two courses I recommend for every Blender beginners. In the CG Boost course, you will learn the ins and outs of the software, and then modeling a beautiful car, and animating it as well within Blender. While the Polygon Runway course is project-based, and you will create awesome-looking illustrations directly, without stressing too much on theory part. Both courses have their own merits. I have learned many things from both of them. Their teaching styles are really different, which is a bonus. I would recommend you to try both. But if you can't afford both of them right now, Get the one you think suits you best. If you use the link in my video description, you will also be supporting my small channel. Those are affiliate links, which means I'll receive a small commission on every sale, without costing you anything extra.